Was I recording? Hell yeah, I was. I think that's the same one. There you go, guys. Flipping and pitching. Nom. Nom. Yeah. Okay. What is up, guys? Welcome back to the Brave Angler. Today, I am going to teach you a technique that is near and dear to my heart, especially down in Florida, especially now that we're getting into the fall, and that is flipping and pitching, um, and, and particularly punching. Now this is a technique that will catch you fish, and if you're not using this technique, you could be missing out on a big bag. So, I'm gonna teach you the setup I use, the knots I use, everything to get you flipping and pitching, as well as the actual technique and how you can practice. So first things first, now, like I said, I actually have two flipping and pitching setups right now in the fall down here in Florida. We're talking more about punching. So this is a 7.6 heavy, uh, with a uh, braided line and this actually is a six to six reel. Some people will argue the high speed versus the low speed. I just feel you get a little bit more torque on the fish when you're using low speed because of that bigger gear. Uh, you don't get as much, it doesn't pick as much lineup, but you get a little bit more power on them and that's to pull them out of cover. Like I said, this is more of my punching rod when I'm flipping and pitching. So on here, I got 50 pound braid and we are going to be using a flipping hook, a heavy duty flipping hook, this is a four rock. Like I said, we're talking about heavy punching, so we got a one ounce weight. Now, you can use sinker stops or other bobber stops. These are just cheap bobber stops from Walmart. It's a little different, but I'll show you how to use those um, if budget is a little thing for you. And I actually had cut my line and removed all this stuff. We're just gonna throw my bait back on here. As you can see, it's gotten a lot of use and has caught me some fish here recently. But we're gonna go ahead and get into how to set this up. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna slide this bobber stop on. Like I said, this is a kind of a cheaper route to go, uh, especially if you're having trouble finding bobber stoppers for multiple lines. Like me, I use a ton a different line weights, whether it's fluorocarbon or braid. Take that out, go ahead and cinch this down a little bit. Get a little more line out here. Next, we'll add our weight. All right, so like I said, this is a four aught heavy duty flipping hook from Berkeley. This is just one that you can find at Walmart. I tried finding terminal tackle that you can find pretty much anywhere. Now, the most important to tying this knot is you wanna make sure that you actually go through the eyelet with your tag in from the pointed side. Now, the reason this is, is when you actually put tension on the line, it kicks the hook up. If you do it backwards, it will actually cook the hook backwards and uh, you won't, uh, you're gonna miss a lot of fish. Actually, I don't think you probably not be able to actually catch anything that way. But then you're just going to run this down the shank of the hook, create a loop, and then we're going to come back and we're going to take this tag in and go around the shank of the hook four, three to four times. And then we're gonna run it back through that hook. All right, pulling from the top. Go ahead and cinch it down. Now, cut off our tag end. So, like I said, the whole point of this knot is that when you set the hook, that, see how that does that? It kicks that, kicks that hook out to hook in the top of their mouth or in the bottom of their mouth. So, like I said, as soon as you put tension on that line, that hook kicks out. And that's really what you want. And like I said, if you tie it the other way, instead of it kicking out that way to catch their mouth, it will actually go the opposite way and like I said I've, I've done it before and I've missed some good fish 
Um, doing that, all right, we're going to bring our we're going to bring our bobber stopper down here, and we're just going to make sure it's nice and tight. Cut off the tag ends. Like I said, there's tons of different ones. I was trying to use stuff that you could find at Walmart. Um, and like I said, this has been a good cheap option for me. Gets the job done. We'll work on any type of line. And that's what we're going for. So now we're going to take bait. We're going to go through first quarter inch, run it up past the bait keeper. Now that's past the bait keeper. We're just going to put it in here and make sure it stays text post. All right guys, so like I said, right now we're gonna kinda go over how you want your rod set up. Now I keep mine kinda loose for this kind of stuff just cause the way that you're kinda going about it is different depending on whether you're doing your dominant hand pitching or your non-dominant. So when it comes to your dominant hand, what I like to do is I put my middle finger on the guard there this way I have really good control with my thumb so you're basically gonna be feathering your thumb right and if you do this way with uh, your finger here your first finger it's just a little harder to control I find it's a lot easier to put my finger up here use the and then what you're gonna do is you want your your bait and the, your reel even just like that and you want to hold it you're not really like holding on to it you're just kind of resting it in your hand and what you're going to do is you're going to point your rod tip down, right? And I keep your crank uh, towards the sky. And you're kind of just going to let it swing and bring your rod tip up so it doesn't hit the ground. So just like that. Now, I, I'm used to getting it really low to the water, which is why I'm hitting the grass. So I'm going to go a little bit higher, but you really want it to kind of skim along the water surface and feather it out, right? Now, we have this, this planter right at probably about 10 yards, which is typically going to be the distance you're going to be flipping and pitching from. And you want to kind of get as close as you can to it with keeping your bait as close to the ground or water as you can. And you're using your thumb to feather that to stop the bait as it gets to its target. This is more of the dominant hand technique. What I have found myself doing a lot more lately, just because it seems to be a little faster, is I've been doing non-dominant pitches, just like that. Now, with this, instead of it being even with your reel, what you want to do is, as you reel in, you want it about even with that first eyelet as it comes in. Now, the reason this is, is because you're swinging in towards you, and you don't want to hit yourself in the face. Now, the reason I like doing this, or have found doing this uh, is beneficial, you can get a lot more flips in uh, with less motion and less flipping the rod around. And like I said, this is a great way to practice. But as you guys can see, that's how, how fast it can be. I find myself doing it this way a lot more nowadays. Because like I said, I can get a lot more flips in instead of having to, you know, switch my hand, bring the bait back up to my hand, you know. Now, when I need power... I will switch to my right hand, you know, because you can get a lot further flip. But most of the flips that I do are typically that distance. But if you get good at it, as you can see, you can get all the way to that fence, which is about probably about 40 feet away from me. But like I said, like you're kind of losing accuracy at that point. Like that, that one made it all the way to the fence. But most of the time, you're gonna be flipping, you know, maybe, you know, 15 feet. That, that is the basics of it, right? But one of the things about flipping is you wanna be able to get to the point where you're not making a, a large splash. This is a one ounce weight. So as you can imagine, you know, if I just let it drop like that, it's gonna cause a big splash. So one of the things you do is you want to keep it low to the water and then as you, as it's coming down to where you want it, you're feathering your thumb and you're lifting your rod tip up 
so that that way it takes the momentum out. You can practice this in your yard, just like I'm doing right here, trying to get accurate. Cause like, that's really the point of this is you're finding those little gaps in cover and you're trying to put your bait right there in that gap. So I actually practice in my living room with a uh, dog bowl and just try and get my bait in the dog bowl. I've also have played like uh, games with my friends, um, setting up uh, solo cups, you know, and you know, basically playing like a little game of beer pong but with flipping and pitching. Like I said, it, it's a great technique. Um, and if you're not doing this technique, you are missing out on a lot of fish. Like I said, it's a very accurate because you're it's a very controlled cast with your thumb. You know, you just bob it up and down a little bit, shake it up, nothing, bring it back in, put it in the next spot. Bob it up a little bit, nothing, put it in the next spot. And like I said, you can keep doing that until you get that bite. Now, with the snell knot, there's one thing you have to consider. All right, this is not a slack lining technique. In fact, if you slack line, uh, you'll run into some issues. What you wanna do is a pull hook set. And what that is, is when you pull it and keep the line tight, it keeps that hook in that position to catch the front or the mouth. If you slack line it what will, and jerk set it, what will happen is it will almost bounce back, you know, cause like it's relying on that tension to keep that hook in that position. So that's just something to keep in mind. Now, uh, the next time we go out fishing, which will be Tuesday, I will be going fishing with Warrington again, and we'll actually be filming this time. We'll, uh, we'll get some flipping and pitching in because we're gonna be out on Lake Weir and this is a very great technique for Lake Weir. You can just do this all day. It doesn't get tiresome. But yeah, that is my heavy punching. But like I said, I have two setups that I actually use and we'll go ahead and look at that other setup. All right guys, this is gonna be more for open water scenarios, not really heavy cover. So as you can see, I have a worm on it. And this is more like when you're on the outside of cover. Down here in Florida, we have a lot of, a lot of lilies. Dragging a big worm is you know, pretty much one of the best ways to do it. But the thing I found is when you're going into cover with a, like say a Texas rig instead of a flipping hook, I just, I seem to miss a lot more hookup ratio. Now, this is not tied on with a Snell knot. This is actually tied on with a Pinston knot. And the reason that is, is with fluorocarbon, the abrasion factor, I want two points of contact on the hook. So that's why I use a Pinston knot when it comes to fluorocarbon. You can use the Snell. It's just, I find that it snaps a lot more often at the knot uh, doing a Snell knot with fluorocarbon. Now this is 20 pound fluorocarbon. So it can still, and it's abrasion resistant. So it can still handle going into light cover. But like I said, the, this kind of stuff, um, when I, what I'm flipping with this kind of stuff is very light cover, open water. And then, you know, I'm just dragging this worm back to me. You know, I'm not, uh, I'm not like doing a little bob and stuff like that, like I would with the creature bait. But that is my secondary flipping and pitching setup. Another difference is this is a medium heavy rod. Uh, 7.5 ratio like i said like this i'm doing more open water so i want that speed to hurry up and get the fish in the boat well, let's do a little maintenance cast right quick but but like i said guys flipping and pitching very good way to catch fish especially now in the fall when you're gonna kind of going back to the cover you know flipping and pitching brush piles you know that is to me, it's the sauce for the fall fishing is like, I pretty much either fish my jerk baits or I'm flipping and pitching. Still not quite time for swim baits, which swim baits are my favorite way to fish. But you know, like this is definitely a, a happy medium for me. Um, like I said, like it's about as close to finesse fishing as I like to go. And uh, you know, I do, I do fish a drop shot every now and then, but I would much rather be flipping and pitching. All right guys. So just a right quick update on our giveaway. You guys have been doing a great job making sure you're commenting on videos and all that kind of stuff. A lot of you haven't realized yet though that some of the past videos have the same message and there are code words for additional chances to win in those. So definitely be going back and checking on those. 
Uh, but like I said, you guys are doing such a great job. Like we have already hit just about 200 subscribers at the time I'm filming this video. And like, honestly, I don't think this giveaway is gonna last long. So make sure you get your chances to win entered. And if you like content like this, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Now, go catch a fish.